Hey guys, what's up? If you are new here, my name is Miko. Welcome. So if you've watched my last few videos, you've heard me mention that I had 360 LiPo. So I wanted to sit down and talk about the reasons why I decided to have LiPo, talk about how it started and how it was going. So pull up a chair, girl. Pull, pull up a chair, get comfortable. We're gonna be here for a few minutes. So yes, I had 360 LiPo on March 7, 2024. Here are some of my before pictures. So this is me visiting my girl in Arizona, stomach huge. Your girl still look good, but that stomach, I, I, mm -mm, mm -mm. But I have lost 15 pounds since my procedure and I am ecstatic with my results. I'm 11 weeks post-op and this is what I'm looking like. 11 weeks in. I am so happy with my results and I do not have my Faha on right now. So this is just all me. So let me tell you the events that led up to me gaining all that weight and ultimately deciding to have lipo. Now, as a former group fitness instructor, I never thought I would need lipo. I had never considered lipo. I was very active with my workouts. I have my online fitness studio, Jiggle Free Zone. I was working out on a regular basis body was slamming okay looked great but in april of 2020 i was getting ready to film a fitness video for my online fitness studio and i got winded in the warm-up so i knew something was wrong totally unlike me i knew something was wrong so you know it's the lockdown it's COVID. so i got a telehealth appointment with the doctor explained my symptoms to him he said it sounded like graves disease i was a little alarmed because graves disease sounds grave right i mean i was it, it threw me for a loop but he explained to me what graves disease was and it's basically just a hyperactive thyroid okay your thyroid is producing too many hormones it elevates your heart rate it makes you lose tons of weight and it also made my joints very achy and tender i was miserable i was hot all the time i didn't know if i was going into menopause it was just a litany of symptoms so he referred me to an endocrinologist went to see my endocrinologist she decided to treat it with methamazole for two years because graves disease can correct itself over a period of time Fast forward two years, it did not correct itself. So we decided to do the thyroid ablation. It's basically just an iodine pill that you swallow. It prevents your thyroid from producing any hormone. So then I had to get on level thyroxine. And she told me it would take some trial and error to get my correct dosage, right? So when you do the ablation, it puts your thyroid in hypoactive where you gain weight, can't lose weight. So essentially that's where I've been for the last year or so before I decided to get the lipo. I was just getting bigger and bigger. My face was getting bigger. And in December of last year, I just said, forget it. I'm gonna have liposuction. So I did a Google search. I don't know anyone that had lipo. So I just did some research online. Uh, checked out a couple plastic surgeons in Atlanta on the Better Business Bureau and ultimately I decided to go with Dr. Nam Nam with Atlanta Plastic Surgery. So I called their office. I'm looking at my notes. I kept I kept my lipo journal on my iPad. So I wrote down all of the important dates. So so I called their office on uh, December 29, 2023. I think it was a Friday. Left a message. They called me back that Monday. Schedule my consult for January 9th. So going to the office, I meet with uh, the plastic surgeon, his nurse practitioner, and the admin. So we talk about, you know, my why and what results I was looking for. And we ultimately decided that lipo versus the tummy tuck will give me the results that I want. Because with lipo, all they do is suck out the fat. With a tummy tuck, they suck out the fat, tighten the muscle, tighten the skin. They do reconstructive surgery with the tummy tuck, which is why it's about three times the cost of lipo. So that's one of the reasons that I went with the lipo, but also I just didn't need the tummy tuck since I'm so active. Lipo was going to give me the results that I needed. But what was really cool is during the consult, they took these 3D images of my body. So they took images of the front, the back and both sides and with this 3d vector imaging they can piece 
all of those images together to create a 3D image of my body. And during the consult, they were able to sculpt the areas where I wanted to have lipo so I could see what my results would look like, like real time. It was super cool, really cool. So decided to go ahead with the procedure, scheduled it for March 7th. My pre-op was February 28th. So during the pre-op, I met with a nurse practitioner and she just explained how everything would go. Day of surgery, what prescription she had called in for me that I needed to pick up and have on hand before the day of the surgery. So I was ready to go when I got home. So day of surgery is the outpatient procedure, but they do it under general anesthesia. So you have to have somebody drive you. So my husband drives me, we get there at 1130, surgery is scheduled for 1 30. they put me in pre-op pre-op nurse comes in they insert an iv uh the anesthesiologist comes in asks me about you know my medical history any allergies any issues with anesthesia they gave me a cleansing pad so my husband could wipe down the areas where we were going to do the surgery can't eat midnight the night before so i'm a little hungry but once they gave me the iv and started pumping me with those fluids i was good to go uh they came in said the doctor was running a little bit late he was a little behind on the surgery before me and i did not mind at all because if he needs to take more time with my procedure i want him to do that okay they only ended up pushing it back like an hour uh and i remember because when they rolled me into the operating room they have to document the time and i remember her saying 2:37. So I'm on the operating table. All I remember is the anesthesiologist putting the mask over my face, telling me to count sheep or something. I remember getting to three and next thing I know, I was waking up in post-op recovery room and we were getting ready to go. So from my point of view, it was over with like that. But realistically, I was there for like seven hours, start to finish. So husband drives me home that night. I get in the bed, I'm knocked out for the rest of the day. Next morning, I wake up and I'm curious on what I look like. So I peel off the little Velcro wrap that they put on me and I took some pictures. This is what I look like the next day. These are all of my surgical entry points. They did my stomach, my back, upper back, lower back, and my hips. I was super sore and you can see all the bruising. And later on that day, the plastic surgeon called me to see how I was doing, left his cell phone number in case I was having any complications. They sent me a bouquet of flowers a couple days after my procedure. And I thought that was so thoughtful. And that was one of the reasons why I wanted to go with a local plastic surgeon here in Atlanta. I know some people go to Miami, they go to Mexico, out of the country, uh, because you can get the procedure a little bit cheaper. But for me, saving money wasn't my primary focus. What was most important to me is that I had somebody that was reputable, did good work, was board certified, someone I can go in to see if I have any issues, all of my follow-up appointments. You're able, I'm able to just go in and see him. He can lay eyes on me and I know he's going to be there if I need anything. So in terms of downtime, I had my procedure on a Thursday. So I took Thursday and Friday off and I work remote that whole next week. I didn't have any physical limitations. So she told me whatever I felt like doing, I could do. But I didn't work out for about a month and a half post-surgery. I just didn't feel like it. I was sore, I was swollen, I was irritable, burning, itching, irritation, the whole nine yards. It is a process, you guys, not painful, but definitely some discomfort. So yeah, guys, I'm extremely happy with my results. Uh, we finally got my level thyroxine dosage right. And so I've lost 15 pounds since the procedure. I have been working out and watching what I eat, okay? So light bulb, it's not a weight loss procedure. It just sucks out the fat. You still have to manage your caloric intake and burn calories, okay? So I have logged my entire post lipo recovery, lymphatic massages, the faha, my experience, how horrible I was feeling, everything. So that is in my lipo playlist. Check out those videos I share information that I wish I knew before I had the procedure. I talk about the additional cost involved because it's more than just the cost of the procedure itself. It's a lot involved, girl, a lot. It is a process, okay? And I documented all of that. Some of those videos are raw. 
I did not have the energy or inclination to get all dialed up to do a video. I just pulled out my cell phone and just started telling you guys how I was feeling. So the video quality isn't great, but I think it's helpful for you to see those because I'm, it's in the moment. I'm telling you exactly how I'm feeling one week, two weeks, three weeks into the recovery process. So I think that's the best representation of what it is like going through that recovery process. And if you are planning to have lipo, let me know how it goes and good luck with your procedure girl, okay? Let me know how it goes. All right, guys, I will see you in the next video. Love you, bye.